What's going on guys, it's your average consumer. And I know you see it. You see the PS5 over here, but this video is not about the PS5 exactly. We got some new products from a new brand, sort of, called Inzone. Now Inzone is actually a brand under Sony who's now getting into the PC accessory world that also works with the PS5. And we're gonna unbox a few of the products here today, check them out, let you guys know what you can expect. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited. So we have two gaming headsets over here. This is their H3 and the H9, we'll go over the difference. There's also another one, I think the H6. Um, but we also have the M9, which is a gaming monitor. Now, you might be wondering why is Sony coming out with things for the PC world? Well, it's actually interesting. So there's Sony Interactive Entertainment, which is like the PlayStation side of things. And then there's Sony Electronics. So Sony Electronics manufactures all of the Sony headphones, Walkman, all the Sony stuff that they still make those, Jay. They just dropped a, they just dropped another one like a couple weeks ago. But yeah, the WH-1000X Mark Vs, all of those, that's Sony Electronics. Sony Interactive Entertainment makes PlayStation stuff. But now with this Endzone brand, it's kind of like merging the two worlds together. I always wondered why the WH-1000X didn't work for PlayStation. It just felt like they're all Sony. It should just make sense. Um, but like I said, this is going to be bridging the gap between like those two sides. But enough talking, enough background. Let's take a look at these products. Okay, so we'll start off with the wired version. These are the H3s. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited for this whole in-zone product line because Sony has so much experience when it comes to headphones, TVs, and we're gonna see a lot of the technology that they use for like the 1000X or even their television line trickle down into some of these more gaming focused products. All right, so these are the H3s. You have the ear cups that can come down. Like I said, these are the wired versions. So these are the H3s. There's some paperwork as well as some stickers. And you get your adapter if you wanna go ahead and plug this into your PC or computer. Okay, so that's the H3, but let's take a look at the bigger brother this is the H9. So this is the top of the line version, this is the H9. Now the H7 is also a wireless headset with Bluetooth, um, but it does not have active noise cancellation. And you know, more paperwork, stickers, got our USB-C to A cable, the dongle, so you can go ahead and plug this into your PS5 or your PC. And it just has a little switch so you can pick which kind of console you're using. And these are the H9s. Very similar look to the H3s, but one big difference here are actually on the ear cups. So the same leather that we see with the 1000X Mark Vs, which are really soft and very comfortable, you have that here. Whereas the H3 has like a more plush fabric kind of feel to it. But yeah, these are the H9s. And listen, I've tried these already. Spoiler alert, they're pretty good. And all right, that's what we've got for the gaming headset. Now let's take a look at the monitor. Some screws, power brick, power cable. We've got our stand, legs. It's coming. <laughs> and our monitor. And right here we've got our M9 gaming monitor. And one thing you'll notice, guys, these definitely fit the aesthetic of a PS5. Even though these are gaming PC and PS5 oriented, uh, aesthetically, they follow the same PS5 design. It fits right in. Dang, you guys. We went and did purple for the boxes, but the products are white. We're gonna have to swap this again. So clearly, design-wise, I think these look awesome. This is a 27-inch display. Now, this is 4K and has a 144 hertz refresh rate. Now, what makes this thing a little bit different compared to a lot of what you'll see on the market right now is that it has full array local dimming. You know what, before I show you guys what I wanted to show you, we do have to talk about port selection here. So we're looking at two HDMI 2.1 ports, of course. PlayStation, you know you need that. You got a display port, USB-C, one of those funky 
USB big, I don't even know what they call this one. It's the big USB port. As well as three USB 3.0 ports. So all the ports you need. So let's get into it. Let's get this baby set up. Get some gaming going. All right guys, so we've been playing around with the new gear. We've got it all sprawled out on the table. Like we said before, these all work with the PC as well as the PS5. And we had some time to spend with both of them, kind of see how they operate on both sides. I gotta say, pretty happy with the performance. So first, let's talk about the gaming headsets. Now I'm not gonna lie, these are exactly what I feel like Sony intended these to be. Some new high-end gaming headsets, but I think all of them are gonna be really great options for PS5 owners. Now, there's a lot of good stuff that Sony's doing here. This kind of falls in line with the design, like I said before, of the PS5. We've got the white and the black. These just feel a lot more premium than the Pulse right now, and it makes sense with the higher price tag. Uh, this essentially is as if the Pulse and a pair of 1000X Mark Vs came together, had a baby, and then boom, we got the H9. So the H9s are absolutely awesome, but if you don't wanna spend the money, the H3s are a really good wired option. But of course, you know, they're wired and they're missing some of the features that you get with the H7 or the H9. So for a $99 gaming headset, I actually like these a lot. I like the audio quality. Uh, and Sony's done a couple of things here to make sure that the audio quality comes in pretty well, uh, even with the design. So you'll notice that these are pretty rounded ear cups, especially when it comes to the actual body itself. This design, even though it's a little bit on the larger side, it's very intentional to help with that spatial sound, especially when it comes to these higher end models since they support that 360 spatial audio. So I really like what they've done with these. I like the sound quality, they definitely sound premium. Um, when compared to something like the Pulse that is the only first party headset so far for the PlayStation, these will definitely be a really nice upgrade. I feel like these sound better than the Pulse as well. And these support some of those special features that we saw with the Pulse headset like that 3D audio. And you'll also get those little notification indicators on screen. So if you turn on your mic, you can see that turn on. If you wanna control your volume, you'll see those come on as well. And like we saw in the unboxing, these use a dongle uh, to connect with the PS5, give you access to all of those features, but they also have Bluetooth. So if you wanna go ahead and connect your phone, you can use these as a pair of Bluetooth headphones. Uh, you can take calls with them, all that good stuff. Uh, but what's really nice is that these can actually pair between the two devices at the same time. So right now, you can see from the LED indicator that it's blinking white and blue. White shows that it's connected to the PS5. Blue shows that it's connected to my phone. So you actually are able to hear both audio sources at the exact same time. And if you're wondering about how volume control works between the two, uh, the volume dial that you have here on the headset will control the volume for the PS5. And if you wanna control the volume on your phone, you just do it from your phone. And the one thing that sets this apart from something like the H7 is the active noise canceling, which is really solid on here. Uh, it sounds really good. It has the ambient mode, which is pretty decent. You're able to hear people that are around you if someone tries to speak to you, as long as your game volume isn't crazy high. Great battery life, 32 hours with active noise canceling on. The H7s have 40 hours of battery life. Either way, I love these. I think these are great. It's what the PS5 was missing. These guys, they're 300 bucks, really, really expensive. Um, if you don't care for active noise canceling, you can always go with the H7s. And I'll be honest, I feel like the H7s are probably the sweet spot. Active noise canceling on these are pretty good. Um, but when I'm playing the game, if I turn it on or off, I'm not seeing a really big difference. For just the gaming side of things, I feel like a lot of people are gonna be able to get by with just the H7s. You don't have to fork over the extra, what is it, 70 bucks for the feature. These are still first party, right? Even though they've got the Inzone brand, they're still made by Sony and they have all of the PS5 features. Yeah. I'm. I'm calling it first party. So if you want a first party gaming headset uh, between the Pulse and these guys, this I think has better audio quality, but the Pulse has more features and they're wireless. So choice is yours. Now, silly me, 
I've been framing this whole portion as a PS5 gaming headset, but it's also for gaming PCs. Uh, and it's honestly the same deal. You still get that same high quality sound. Uh, still really happy with that. What's great with the PC is that you can actually go in and change a lot with the software. Uh, you can actually control different parts of the audio, it has equalizer settings. Uh, you can analyze your ears for that spatial audio so that you'll have your profile in the system. Just way more controls actually when it comes to the PC side of things. I absolutely feel comfortable recommending this for the PC side. Still feeling like the H7s are that sweet spot, PC or PS5. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend no matter what system you're playing on. Now, we gotta talk about the M9. So the M9 is interesting, right? Now, what we've got here is what I feel like is a bigger leap for Sony into the gaming PC accessory space uh, because we know Sony when it comes to headphones, gaming headsets, they have a really extensive track record, but Sony's main focus has usually been on TVs when it comes to displays and that kind of thing. Not really gaming PC monitors. And I think for a first attempt, they did a really, really good job here. Like I said before, this one is the 4K option with 144 hertz refresh rate. There's also a cheaper option. This one is 899. There's a cheaper one that's just full HD. That one goes up to 240 hertz. So pick your weapon. Do you want that higher resolution? Is 144 hertz enough? If you need that really fast screen, you can always go with the 1080p option, uh, which is at 240. Uh, but I really like the quality here. And that's mainly in part because this is a full array display and that plays a really big part in the picture quality that we're getting here because it really impacts the dynamic range it's a great monitor i really like this i like the fact that it has built-in speakers i like the design and if you want to pair this with a ps5 like i said it looks the part and it also has like the software integration that you'd expect as well so what kind of software integration do you get with this right with this depending on what you're doing on your console let's say you're gaming It'll automatically switch to the gaming mode. It's a preset mode that Sony thinks is going to give you the best quality uh, for playing games. But let's say you wanna watch something like Netflix, it'll switch over to the content watching preset uh, so you can watch video and that kind of thing. It, it, it's completely different than the gaming preset mode. And it's HDMI 2.1, so it supports variable refresh rates. So everything that you want in a monitor or a TV for your PlayStation, this pretty much checks all the boxes. Now, one other thing that I will mention is that when you're pairing it on the PC, you get access to a ton of controls thanks to the InZone app, so you can make a ton of configurations. It's actually pretty impressive that that app gives you so much control when it comes to the display as well as the gaming headsets. And just to jump into the InZone app really quick, you can do all of your picture adjustments right from the app, which I feel like is pretty unique as well as all of the gaming features, you have access to pretty much everything right here. And if you don't wanna use the InZone app, you can always jump into the on-screen menu. You can see you got a bunch of different options here as well. Control your picture settings. You can personalize the lighting from here as well, which I like. So everything that you really wanna see, you've got all of that here. So these InZone products, what? What's my opinion, right? I gotta say, I think Sony did a really good job. The, this monitor in particular is pretty expensive, but you can always go to the 1080p option. I feel like that's pretty affordable for what you get in terms of like overall screen quality. And when it comes to the headsets, pricing wise, those are in line uh, with a lot of the things we see with other gaming headsets. The high-end ones being around that $300 price point. Even the $230 one, which I feel like is the sweet spot, I think it's fairly priced and 99 bucks. I feel like this end zone line, I'm looking forward to seeing what they come out with in the future. Very happy with their initial launch of products. I definitely think these are gonna be easy for me to recommend for uh, PlayStation users, as well as folks who want to game on a PC. Sony did a good job, kudos to them. I have everything, of course, linked down below. Hopefully, by the time this video drops, links will be available. Uh, but that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. It's dope that Sony came out with some new PlayStation gear. Always happy for that. But till the next video, guys, it's your average consumer. Peace.
It's something, man. It's something.